what's up you guys it's mary and Alma. we invite you guys to like and subscribe share and comment down below y'all be, because today we are going to be talking about something that we had already seen in Gwendolyn's um was it her first youtube thing that she had made yeah. but she said something in particular what i thought was really sad is that she said it that it felt normal for her that yeah. He wasn't around so she didn't even expect for him to come to go for the isabel surgery right and we and we were just talking about you know like just the normalization of abuse i yes. feel like i yes. mean of course not physical abuse but just emotionally mentally verbally. you know spiritually verbally yes all that stuff you know mm -hmm. that she has probably been dealing with from cody yeah and i feel like we've watched a couple of things where we have really seen how people just normalize abuse and it becomes their norm so now they yeah. make excuses for it yeah and they get comfortable so, comfortable in yeah. it. Yeah. And then what happens is it's really not until you actually change your environment or go outside of that. Yeah. And someone else tells you no. That's, that's actually not, not normal. normal. That's not no. That that doesn't sound right, you know. Yeah. That you begin to question it. That you begin to look at it from a different perspective. And um I just want, even the time when he, and he always seems to be sometimes impatient. I saw that like when they were like in Vegas, when they were doing that boat, him yeah. and, and um, Christine. And, and he was yelling at her and stuff like that. And yeah, called her was, a crybaby. And even yeah. Robin had to say something, yeah. which, even though she never says anything. Yeah. Um, and um, I just felt that that was kind of like harsh, you know? Yeah. Um, the thing of even asking Janelle to kick the boys out because they were having friends like he was not going to come over you know Dayton was still at home like it was yeah. just you know those kinds of things and I feel like also um, even the favoritism that he showed yeah I think that after a while they got used to it because yeah. even Savannah got used to the fact that okay Cody's over there robbing with her kids right but I don't see him for weeks at a time yeah you know, and I kind of have gotten used to that. Yeah. So even the favoritism that he showed, I think some of the children kind of just kind of got used to that. Yeah. And I remember that moment um, with Isabel when he was trying to not go. Right. And he's like, honey, um, you wouldn't be mad at me or something. You say you're not going to be mad at me and, and hold a big grudge like, yeah. or whatever and try to console him console when she's him. the one who has to go get this life or death like surgery, surgery exactly and she had to be basically telling him like no he's like you sure not gonna become a bitter old woman because your dad didn't go with you to a surgery but even he was trying to minimize how important exactly. the surgery was yeah and like your you daddy know, can't come it's not a big deal like don't turn into a bitter old woman because of it yeah and then also you what know? i thought was very interesting was the fact that you know i think he has said that of abuse it's manipulation yeah you know? manipulation is definitely a form of abuse and not and not and it's emotional abuse because you don't want her to show her emotion right to make you feel better exactly you know yeah but i also just felt like you know what's really funny which i hadn't even realized it mm -hmm. but it's like when his other the first three wives he ever had when they asked him for something he refuses to budge yeah. But I remember when he went to go see Mary or whatever, this was in Flagstaff at her Airbnb, mm -hmm. he was like, oh, Mary, I can't stay long because, you know, I can't stay away from Robin's kids for more than three days. Yeah. Which I thought was crazy. Yeah. Because he has made those adjustments for Robin's kids. Exactly. But he never makes adjustments for the other wives. No. Like he has staunchly said, I will never spend more than three days away from them. Yeah. And he sticks to it. Exactly. I remember when he had even talked about um, the COVID. He was talking about how everybody has to social, social distance for like a month or two months. Mm hmm and I think Janelle's mother had died or whatever. He went to the funeral, mm -hmm. but he's like, oh, you know, I promised Robin and her kids that I'm gonna be there before Christmas, so I have to be there. Mm -hmm. And if I don't go, she'll never forgive me. Mm -hmm. This man, instead of quarantining, he goes and magically, all yeah. of a sudden, we had rapid tests for COVID. Yeah. So he took that instead yes. and went to go see her. Exactly. And then you can see he was hugging on Rob and all this stuff. Even the kids had to go like this. Because he was all over her. I mean, but you there talking about you were going there for the kids, but you hold on to Ron for like almost an hour. Yeah. So I just felt like the thing is that he always makes the adjustments for Robin, yeah. but he just doesn't make the adjustments for his wives. And that's what really broke my heart about this whole thing. Because really, he yeah. could have saved this whole 
situation had he actually been accountable Mm -hmm. self-aware and if he actually gave cared enough to actually listen to them and make adjustments yeah but now he's like throwing a temper tantrum about them leaving and all this stuff yeah and i'm just heartbroken for gwendolyn because she's kind of used to this behavior and most Mm -hmm. of the kids are used to it but i just wonder what does that do to them when they get older and Mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're no longer near him yeah like what would they think about all the stuff that they had gone through and especially for watching the show that's why they're estranged now because they have moved out of that environment right and they're looking at it from a different perspective. Yeah. And so they are seeing clearly the clarity is coming. Yeah. You know, and so that pain, that annoyance, that like what he, he did was wrong. Yeah. You know, it's coming to them and they're just choosing not to engage with him. Right. But it goes back to him saying that, oh, you know, I need to make sure because Rob will never forgive me or whatever. He it's doesn't like want to Janelle ruin said. anything it's, with them. Yeah, he wants the like, kids to love him. Yeah, it's like what Janelle said. I wish he will see my perspective as much as he sees as Robin. much as he sees things from Robin's perspective. Yeah, and that's the difference. And I feel like with Christine pulling the rug under him, because that's how he feels, and divorcing him, he wanted to force Janelle because he knows that she has been friends with Robin, um, with Christine, Christine. all this time. She, he wanted her to choose him and ostracize, along with the children, ostracize her. Yeah. And when she refused to do that, um, it made her that public enemy number one. Yeah, absolutely. And so he, he was not going to say anything from her perspective at all. Yeah. But Which think- was unfortunate. And that's where I think when Christine was talking about the hurt that Janelle feels. Yeah. And that's that hurt because she's feeling like, I mean, I've done everything. I haven't like, really I have given you any strife. I have done everything strife. for you. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I have not done that you haven't completely requested, but you're insinuating, is to kick Christine to the curb, which I'm not going to do. And then to kiss Just, Robin's rear end yeah. as well. Which I am not going to. And my kids are not going to go there apologizing to Robin. No. Like, she's some victim. Like, she did. Like, she hasn't done anything. And if like, anything, Robin should be apologized to the entire family for breaking up their family. Yeah, and they apologize to the kids. Because, I mean, I remember we, I think we had done, we had done a video about Robin always being the victim. Like, from the very beginning. Like, yeah. she was trying to make Hunter the bad guy. Almost turning Cody against Hunter. Yeah, Because he did not, I guess, really like her or he just did not want to he he because saw he was that cody truly. was not being a, a father yeah. he saw that so she's like oh hunter needs to hold my uh, child hunter, remember when hunter was having a very hard time when he first got to um when he first got to vegas remember yeah and sometimes he will leave janelle's home he'll be so frustrated yeah. And he will make a beeline to Christine's home. Yes. And, and you'll see truly. truly. I, yes. And so I that was that. his own safe spot. Yeah. He's one little bright light yeah. in this whole thing. Right. Right. And Robin saw that yeah. and was angry about it. Yeah. You know, and so when she had Solomon, she wanted, she was seeing just how much the kids loved Christine. You know, because I even remember one time. Remember when they took the younger girls right. for, a, I think it was a birthday party or something for Aurora and Brianna? I think Remember, so. Robin, they did not take, um, they went to that amusement park. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they did yeah, not yeah. take the older children. Yeah, no, at I think all. just the young girls. So I think that she was watching this whole thing. Robin has been assessed in this family. Yeah. She watched and saw that the older children are very close to Christine. Yeah. And she was this was her way of trying to peel some of them away. Yeah. Like Gwendolyn, I remember Gwendolyn went, Isabel went. Yeah. Right? She was trying to peel and they all went younger with children away from Christine, even though those are her kids. You know <laughs> what I'm Weird. saying? And so she has been watching that. So when she saw that Hunter was, you know, so close to truly, it's like when she had Solomon, it's even though everyone was holding the baby, it wasn't enough. Hunter had to hold the baby yeah. and show love for that baby as much as he did for Truly. She was like yeah. so insistent, even on, on her birthbed, like, oh, Hunter, Hunter. Like, but she, she was up that. to no damn good. Because yeah. right after that, after you have just pushed out a whole entire watermelon, yeah. you want to go and tell Mary, oh, 
I want to be your surrogate. It was up to no good. Please, let me be. Let me be there for you. And then we never even heard of that anymore, except when she wants to talk to everybody else to tell. First, she kicks Cody out, says that it's a secret. Right, that she wants to tell Mary. But then proceeds to but tell But then she else. tells all the other sister wives yeah. of the wonderful thing that she's, this altruistic thing that she wants to do for Mary. Yeah. You know, and, and then she proceeds to quickly get pregnant again. I guess Mary went through too, a though, lot. Oh, My, <laughs> no. Had made her, you know, had told her, let them sit on the nose. Let's sit on the nose. Hmm? That was a mess. Was he said cross legged on that Grand Canyon and yeah. told that lady we will not have sex no more. Yeah. It was brutal. Yeah. But yeah, I think that all of them have been going through this even the movie. Even that movie so many times. I mean it was like fifteen. It's times? like your children don't feel secure if you have to move. I mean I we moved a lot before you kids hold me remember. Right. Like I think we moved maybe three or four times, I wanna say. But once, like, you guys were five, like, I just stayed, well, like, no, we're not doing this moving all over the place. We're going to stay put. Yeah. You know, because even now moving all over the place, you're, you're taking your security away from the children. Exactly. You're taking your Every time they move to a new place, they have to make new friends. Yeah. You guys are not in the army. Right. Why are you moving so much? Exactly. 15 times. Is that, like, that That's not even to move, normal. Like, once every two years. Yeah. Like, that is so ri ridiculous, you know? Yeah. And even when they seem to have um, some kind of security, you know, like in Las Vegas. Right. They find a way to move again. Yeah. Um, i.e. Cody, because he's the one who's telling them, we got to go. Yeah. We got to go. So even that is a form, I think, of something that's really abnormal that shouldn't be normalized yeah that they made no normal in the kids lives and that's why you yeah. see them like they a lot of them got married early at an yeah. early age like yeah it's this is and i'm sure they're just going to stay put like, yeah wherever they are i'm sure most of them are going to just try to stay put because yeah, for sure. they did not like all that moving that yeah. they did when they were younger I think so. Cody has really normalized a lot of horrible behaviors for yeah. the kids. Yeah. And because of that, I feel like they're going to have some issues maybe in the future unless yeah. they actually deal with it and they see it. Right. I mean, I feel like Gwen is starting, I think feel like she's probably going to go through a grieving process. Yeah. I yeah. mean, as she's watching the show and getting, when you realize seeing he's not everything who you, you thought, thought he was. was. Yeah. It's kind of like a loss or, of somebody. Yeah. But then you hope that the person starts to wake up and see things and try to say, okay, well, how can I get myself out of this funk, out of this grieving process and yeah. try to just, I mean, whether you decide to have them in your life, you can either ex decide to, like, Not accept them for who they, they are, are. Right. or you can just cut them out. But I don't really see Gwendolyn like, cutting Cody completely out of her life. But no. I feel like at the end of the day, that's her father. And even yeah. in the video, you, you can kind of see that she's still trying to protect him, yeah. honestly. Yeah. So. Um, and the other thing, Christine is striving on her end. She tries so hard to, to be keep peaceful. that relationship with them going. Yeah. You know, she's she's striving on her own end, and you know. But yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. Yeah, but it's not good to normalize. I mean, I feel yeah, like you feel like you don't get, you don't even realize that you're normalizing a very abnormal behavior because this is all you know. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But exactly. I feel like it leads you to a really bad path, and then sometimes mm -hmm. you just start partic participating in stuff that just is not healthy for you. Exactly. You know, and like exactly. you said, until somebody wakes you up or tells you like this is not normal, then it. Yeah. You don't even realize it. You don't realize it, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I think she had that awakening, which I feel like she's going to have a lot of awakenings yeah. as she's watching the show. Because she was like, you know, looking back, you know, I feel bad that I kind of thought that was normal. Yeah. Because it wasn't normal. Your dad should have been there, you yeah. know, for the whole thing with yeah. Isabel. I mean, she that girl she could have died. Yeah. You know, because that spinal, spine is like connected to everything. I know. One wrong yeah. move and you're like, That's your whole nervous you're system. messed up. Yeah. So, yeah. But that was just her take on normalizing abuse when it came yes. to, you and know, Gwen and stuff. another video. I think we're going to do one with Ashanti. Yes. Oh, my God. And I can't wait to do that one. just talk about that normalizing of abuse. Um, yeah. But that's what it is. When it comes down to it, it is some form of abuse. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, you guys, it's Mary. And Alma. You guys, press a like. Subscribe. Share. And comment. Down below.